Right, in this video, we're going to continue to solve inequalities. Example A has a compound inequality that involves fractions, so we're going to multiply the entire inequality by the least common denominator, which would be 6 in this case. So I'm going to do 6 times 1 third is less than 6 times x plus 2 over 2 is less than or equal to 6 times 2 thirds. And then from there, of course, we'll have that 3 cancels into 6 twice, so giving you 2 times 1, or in other words, 2. And that's less than 2 goes into 6 3 times, leaving you 3 times x plus 2. And then less than or equal to 3 goes into 6 twice, giving you just 4. Now from here, we'll distribute. So we'll have 2 is less than 3x plus 6, which is less than or equal to 4. And then we solve by subtracting 6 from all sides of the inequality. We get negative 4 is less than 3x is less than or equal to negative 2. And then we divide everything by 3 in the inequality. So we get negative 4 over 3 is less than x, which is less than or equal to negative 2 over 3. We want to write that in interval notation, we'll just have negative 4 thirds comma negative 2 thirds, but we want to use a bracket for the 2 thirds because of the equal sign on this inequality, and then a parenthesis on the left hand side because of the inequality without the equal sign. So that's our answer with interval notation. Alright, for example B, they have a sort of strange looking compound inequality, and the reason why they're writing it this way though is that this piece here that's on the left is actually designed to tell us that x must be positive. Just think about that. If you have 3 over some number and that result is greater than 0, because that's what this inequality says, right? It's basically saying that 0 is less than 3 over x, so in other words 3 over x is greater than 0. If we know that to be true, then this x must be something that's positive, because if it had been negative, 3 over whatever the value was, if it was negative, would have to be less than zero, right? Because a fraction where the denominator is negative and the numerator is positive is always negative, and any negative number would be less than zero. So the point is, is that this whole statement on the left is just designed to tell us that the x is positive. We can actually then, in other words, ignore that piece of the inequality to just say that that implies that we can solve assuming that x is greater than zero. And it's important that x is greater than zero because we multiply both sides of the inequality by x. We want to make sure we don't have to reverse the inequality symbol. Okay, so with that in mind, let's see what happens if we actually just tried to solve it by multiplying everything by the LCD. So the LCD is 5 times x. So I multiply that by zero, then we have less than 5 times x times 3 over x, and then that's less than 5 times x times 2 fifths. So 5x times 0 is just 0, and then we have less than the x cancels out, giving you 5 times 3, which is 15, and then less than, here the 5's cancel out, and you end up with 2x. Now at this point you have this piece here, which is kind of an obvious statement. Of course 0 is less than 15, which means we can drop it, we don't need to even mention that. We just have 15 is less than 2x. And of course, you can solve that by dividing both sides by 2. And you get 15 halves is less than x. On a number line, if you drew that out, you'd have 15 halves here. And it says 15 halves is less than x, so in other words, the x values are greater than 15 halves, all the way up to positive infinity. And the symbol here, because of our inequality symbol, would be a parenthesis. Right, because that inequality doesn't include an equal sign. So our final answer in the interval notation would basically be from 15 halves up to positive infinity. Those are the solutions for x that work to solve the original statement. Okay, from here our last example is example c, so let's tackle that one next. Alright, so in example c, what they're giving us here is information that's very much like they did in example b. If you look at this piece here, the 2x plus 4 to the negative 1, that can be written as 1 over 2x plus 4, right? And then the fact that they're telling us that that is greater than 0 indicates that the denominator must be positive. 2x plus 4 must be positive. And the reason why I know it must be positive is because if it was negative, then 1 over 2x plus 4 would be something that's less than 0 because the fraction would be negative, and all negative numbers are less than 0. So again, if 2x plus 4 was negative, the fraction would be negative, and then it would not be greater than 0, it would be less than 0. That implies that 2x plus 4 must be greater than 0. 
So because of that, we can actually drop the left-hand piece here. We don't need to bother with the information that that part is greater than zero. So we can just simply do what? One over two x plus four is actually less than one half. And then we can solve this very easily by cross multiplying, right? So we can multiply this piece times this and that piece times that, giving us two is less than two x plus four. Again, the reason why we need to know that two x plus four is greater than zero is because if it was negative, we'd have to reverse the inequality symbol. Here, we don't have to worry about that. So now with that, I can solve by subtracting from four from both sides. We'll end up with negative two is less than two x. And then if we, of course, divide both sides by two, we end up with the idea that x is greater than negative 1, or negative 1 is less than x. And if you wrote that as a graph, simply put negative 1 here, and then x is being greater than that would indicate that we're talking about the values that are above negative 1. That, of course, goes all the way up to positive infinity. And then we can, of course, at that point say that our solution is from negative 1 to positive infinity.